An interesting story about the F-101 Voodoo is that they didn't make a prototype. The very first one just was a production aircraft. They built two X-88s that were the prototypes of this aircraft. They made slight changes and it ended up being the Voodoo. So the first aircraft was the prototype, so to speak. And they made A models and B models at first, for a total of 675 for the US Air Force, and then they made another 132 for the Canadian, uh, at the time it was called the Royal Canadian Air Force, but it became the Canadian Armed Forces when they amalgamated the Navy and the Air Force and the Army all in one. So 32418, we'll have to see which one this is. And this one looks really different without the engines. So this whole area here is completely, when the engine's in, the afterburner comes to a, I don't know about, there was different models. They had, they had some that were six feet long. Uh, the one sitting in Abbotsford looks like it's about five feet. Actually, I heard the longest afterburner came out eight feet. Look how beat up it is back here. Wow. This looks like it's been fixed a million times and hit a whole bunch. At the end here, the little cap on the end, it flips up and there's a parachute in there. And these are these planes used parachutes. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. But it looks a little different with the engines in because they, they stick out the back a long ways. It looks semi-restored, like somebody splashed some paint on her. Oh, this is good. All these little switches. Hmm. Hello. We've got both of the nose gear. Those look like they broke off. Nose gear doors. All right. So it looks like it, it looks like the gear doors, sort of the nose gear strut there, slams into this and pulls the doors closed. <laughs> maybe maybe that ring piece on there. No, that's probably for tying it down. Interesting. Interesting, what is what? Something used to be connected. That's some something that. Oh, and there's a bird's nest right there. That's not good. These tires look brand new. These tires are brand new. They got little hairies on them still. You don't see that on a museum aircraft too often. I think this is the prototype. Or the first one, whichever way you want to look at it. And it says General Electric up on the tail. Um, they flew with two different brands of engines, General Electric and something else. These planes were built in the McDonnell factory in St. Louis, Missouri, which And this aircraft evolved into the McDonnell F-4 Phantom, which evolved into the McDonnell F-15 Eagle. McDonnell's just one of the best manufacturers of aircraft in the world. Bought out by Boeing eventually. By the time they made the F-15 Eagle, McDonnell was actually McDonnell Douglas. They had bought out Douglas, which is a massive aircraft manufacturer 
through the Second World War, based on the south side of LAX, California. Then they were McDonnell Douglas, and today they've been bought by Boeing. They're just one huge company. Big flight test nose on her. That does, does not look like it was on the fighter aircraft. I wonder if this one was in test its whole life. I think it was. But there's still one down at Edwards that I know was in test for its whole life. I wonder which one this was. I'm going to look it up. And that one looks like she's in for a restoration. Somebody cooked the paint off it already. Paint's been etched. So this will be getting a restore. This is the first Voodoo built, but they don't call it the prototype because it wasn't in the, it was in production already. It's the first Voodoo built and there was no prototype. This is the first one around and she's still flying. Well, not flying anymore, but she's still, she's actually been restored. It was, they found this thing, it was out in a field for a long time, not doing very well, and somebody's given it a restoration, which means a paint job. And I learned something about this aircraft. This is the space shuttle trainer. So it has the left or the right hand seat is a conventional aircraft. It flies just normal, normal flight controls. But the 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 left seat is entirely space shuttle. And the aircraft had its flight controls and things modified a little bit so that it would feel and react exactly the same as the space shuttle when it's gliding in for a landing. I think that's pretty neat. So all the, every single space shuttle astronaut trained in this Gulfstream. And then now it's here. It's been extensively modified. I've seen what the cockpit looks like and I'll try and get a picture of it. It's pretty cool. There, space shuttle flight simulator. And this is identical seating to the aircraft that's outside. They had to do roughly 50 flights. Oh, I know this. the one you're talking about. Yeah. Then they went out to the yep. craft that's outside and they yep. they flew, had to fly about another 50 flights in that before they'd ever let them in into the space shuttle. So this is the cockpit side for the airplane. That's the cockpit side for the space shuttle controls. This aircraft has been modified extensively for the flight test program. And this plane, <laughs> I don't know what to think. It's got a huge speed brake on there. It's got massive fuel tanks. I don't know what to think. Is it a DEA aircraft? Is it flight test? Is it some type? Are those, those don't actually look like fuel tanks. They got a weird looking nose on them. It must be some kind of instrument or something. Let's try and find out more about this weird looking plane. A weird looking thing on the top too. 